Video and audio are converging right now. You're being completely stimulated by two of your senses, maybe four, I don't know. Maybe you're feeling something. And if you are, that's great because we're here at the Fusky Island, home of the Fusky Fire Patrol. We're gonna do something that you've never seen before. We're gonna play well. We're gonna play the Reese Jones Signature 20 whole course. We're only gonna show you the coolest moments and we're gonna show you what makes it a two-way course, which is an unusual thing and why it has 20 holes. Stay tuned, let's get into it, now. <laughs> that was god awful. <laughs> All right, that, that's fine. Whew! <laughs> Wowee. That was a zowser. Chasing a mulligan, sometimes you think it's simple because you barely hit the ball or lost the woods. But in this case, it was one of those errant flip shots, and I just don't see it. Um, I'm going to give up on her. I mean, no, le no ball, good ball left behind, but sometimes got to say adieu and someone else will find it and they'll be happy with it so it will live a great life look it looks like a bird's nest leave it as it is it's gonna be difficult guys this is about a 10% chance of even contact Did that goes through I heard it hit the tree but it was going right through the tree and I didn't see it come down we shall see we shall see glory me nine or eight I think you're right. Don't try this at home. Okay, we got the height that time. Where's it gonna go down though? And uh, my caddy was right. I landed on the green, it's good on. Anytime you can get on, you give yourself a shot, you're playing golf. A lot of people who struggle with golf, they carry 24 balls, they carry like, you know, whole thing. And if you take out those balls, psychologically, you're gonna end up using them. If you try to play with one ball, you have them in reserve, but you don't like keep them out or have a ball in your pocket by all means, but don't have 12 balls in your pockets. I've had every animal imaginable, but I've never had a possum. Now I'm wondering, wow, why not? <laughs> she's wonderful. If they get frightened enough, and they're easily frightened. Sure. It's an involuntary response, but they actually faint. Plus their heart rate slows down tremendously, so for all intents and purposes, whatever's frightening them will think they're dead. But they have no control when they wake up. It might be two minutes or it might be three hours. And I was grooming a dog, and I, you know, I always tell the people that I have a possum. And so the woman said, well, make sure you know, put the possum away from my dog because my dog's a hunter. After I was done, I brought Chloe out, and the, the dog was just fine. I sent her a picture of myself and Chloe, and I had my arm around the dog together, so. That's fabulous. Yeah, so she's wonderful. Now we've got
got three main ingredients in rum. Sugar, water, and yeast. That's all it takes to make a white rum. Now that's gonna happen in one of the four fermentation tanks on the back wall. And then, uh, the flavor for the white rum, that's only achieved by the sugar that you use. Now we use Demerara sugar. It looks like sugar in the raw. Uh, sugar in the raw, you see that at the restaurants, that's turbinado. This is basically a cousin of turbinado sugar. Gets its name from the Demerara River in South America where it originally grew. What we're doing with that sugar is uh, I'll take for about an hour, I'll take a high speed drill just like this one right here. I'll put that in that barrel, I'll lean over top and I'll mix that sugar around until it dissolves completely. It cannot stay crystallized, has to fully dissolve. Now once the sugar's dissolved, I'll top the barrel off with cold water. My goal is to have a nice room temperature bath in the end. Uh, then I'm gonna add my yeast. It's five and a half pounds of a special turbo yeast out of Denver, Colorado, made just for distilling. Uh, if we used a bread yeast in our rum, it would taste like bread, so we use this special yeast. Uh, what this five and a half pounds of yeast is going to do is in five days, it's going to eat away and completely dissolve that 600 pounds of sugar. So a lot of people are thinking sweetness and calories. Well, the sugar never leaves this barrel. Five days later, our sugar content is zero. There is no sugar left whatsoever. I'll put 150 in each still and I'll flip the switch. Now they're going to run for an average of about nine hours. Now during that distillation process, what we're doing is we're heating that fermentation up to 200 degrees. At 200 degrees, the alcohol is going to evaporate and travel up the column. As it makes the turn to come back down, it's recondensed into grain alcohol and flows out of the tubes from both stills into a single stainless steel drum. Now at the end of that nine hour day, we usually end up with about 50 gallons of 150 proof white rum. Now every bottle of vanilla rum is unique because it gets its own bean into the bottle. It's kind of our homage to the old worm in the tequila bottle. Uh, the beans better to eat than the worm. I try to tell everybody that. You can pull those beans out. You can eat them. Um, we make homemade ice cream with them, save them in the freezer. I've got a freezer bag in my freezer full of old uh, beans that I've pulled out of bottles. Our uh, spiced rum is the only bottle of rum that I don't personally get to make here. Our master distiller actually makes that bottle himself. It's his secret recipe. So what you will get, you'll have the vanilla and you'll have the traditional gold. Now this is the younger version of the gold reserve. This guy is six months in a Woodford Reserve double oaked bourbon barrel where that gold reserve rests for a full year in the bourbon barrel. Now a little history on the barrel first, Woodford Reserve, their basic bourbon is a nine year old Kentucky bourbon. It's an amazing bourbon. Now from there, they take their basic bourbon to another barrel to become their double oaked, two oak barrels. That's where that name comes from. Now during that second aging, this barrel itself absorbs a gallon and a half of that bourbon into the wood. We're using our rum to extract out that bourbon and flavor our rum with their nine-year-old bourbon. As these barrels are all charred on the inside, so it adds that nice little smoky finish to the backside. Now, after our rum sits in this barrel for six months, we have basically flavored our rum with their nine-year-old Kentucky bourbon. Uh, our master distiller, Tony, he was, he's from Kentucky. He wanted to bring those bourbon drinkers over to the rum world and rum drinkers over to the bourbon world. That's kind of how we, that's how this product came from. Now, um, the gold sits in that barrel for six months. It's gonna have a nice uh, amber color to it, nice golden color to it. Uh, it's gonna smell like bourbon. It's actually gonna taste like bourbon, but it drinks like an aged uh, rum, very smooth on the backside and a hint of sweetness to it. I'm a bourbon fan, I love my bourbons. These are my two favorite products that I get to make here. Now, the gold's in that barrel for six months. The gold reserve rests in that barrel for a full year. The big difference, gold reserve, nice oak and smoky finish on the backside. And it was intended to be sipped on the rocks or neat by itself. You're not mixing that one with another product. Um, gold reserve, the other unique part of that is it's only sold right here in the building on property. Uh, we don't make enough to send to any of our distributors. So the gold reserve stays right here for us to sell right out of the building. And then our Fusky Fire, that's gonna be our answer to those other fire products on the market. Cinnamon, a pinch of cayenne pepper, taste exactly like a cinnamon red hot candy. So cinnamon candy fans love that one. And then for the coffee drinkers, we developed Kona Rum. 50 pounds of medium roast Hawaiian coffee beans rest in the barrel for two full weeks. Two weeks later, this is not a, cold, or is not a uh, uh, coffee flavored rum. This is a cold brew cup of coffee that we brewed with 80 proof white rum. A lot of watches come inside of a watch box, but Hook and Gaff, which is out of Lexington, South Carolina, 
based on the Columbia area. They make some really cool watches and they have one, they used to be for fishing. They basically put the dial on the left side so it doesn't get in the way for fishermen. And it's done the same way for golf too. Most watches have the dial on the right side and it gets in the way when you're filleting fish or um, you know the guts get all over you too. You need a watch that's rugged and that can withstand the uh, gory details of cutting fish and stuff. But this one is their golf watch. They branched out to golf. The guy's been a golfer. I mean, he played for the Clemson golf team, one of the top teams in the country. Personally, I'm not a guy who wears a watch while you play, but this one is very light. Um, so it won't get in the way too much if that's the type of golf you are. There are a couple guys who do. I personally like my wrist bare. Just I like to keep it, pockets empty, wrist bare. That's my uh, philosophy. Grip and rip it, pockets empty, wrist bare. But that's a, this is something I'd wear on the 19th hole. So. I can wear it after, you know, just represent that you're into the game. Look at the little markers like for the one o'clock, two o'clock, etc. the hour markers, they kind of look like golf balls, have that theme going. Hook and Gaff, cool brand, Columbia area, representing South Carolina, the capital city. Something that I can see myself wearing at night to represent the game. Hey, nice watch, what's that? Hook and Gaff Golf. This was quite a day. We saw an awesome possum. We made out with Emmy Rossum. And did that really happen or was that when I was sleeping? Thanks for watching. I'm gonna get back on a boat and get to the mainland. I appreciate uh, you watching this movie. Sayonara. That was impressive. What's that? Is that that's a gimme? It's a gimme? If you say so. Thanks.